Hey fairy friends and welcome back to my channel. So, um, as you know, I normally do Furry Fridays, but um, this week I'm going to be doing a scale Saturday. Let's talk about one of my reptiles this week. I'm going to start off with Elliot, and if you guys like it, I can continue to do scale Saturdays if you guys want. If you read the title, this is how I care for my ball python. This is not a care video because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of debate about what's the right way to care for a pet. I care for my pets how I feel is best. Yours might be different from the, be different from the way that you care for your ball python. This is not going to be a how to care for your ball python video. It's going to be how I care for mine. So, yeah. And I haven't been owning reptiles for that long, so it's going to be like what I've learned while having a ball python kind of thing. Sorry if I, like, I try my best to look at the camera, but I film on an iPad so it's tilted and to make direct eye contact with the camera I have to look like this is really awkward so all right so here's Elliot um when I first got him he was about one foot long and um it's been a while since I measured so I'll have to re-measure but last time I checked uh he was about three feet so yeah, we, um, the pet store I got him from is supposed to be an all-male pet store, but they couldn't guarantee um, Cinnamon is singing. So most likely he is a boy. The females get to be around 5 feet, and the males are smaller. They're probably only going to get to be about 4 feet. So, <laughs> Cinnamon. When I first got him, he would not eat. I don't know if it was just that he was scared to be in a new place because he eats just fine now. He's a really good eater. Um, when I first got him and he wasn't eating, um, I thought I was going to have to feed him live because he would just not eat frozen, but he does eat frozen very well now. First, he ate small mice, and now he's eating medium, and we might have to move him up to a large soon. Um, we'll have to see, but yeah, he's a great eater now. He's had three sheds with me. Two of them were complete full sheds, and one of them um, kind of like broke off into pieces. It wasn't a full shed, but I'll show you um, the full sheds. They're really beautiful. Here's one of them. This is like full length when he's not coiled up like he is now. Like, this is his full length. <laughs> and it looks and feels so cool. <laughs> this one actually is a full shed. What are you doing, buddy? You want to see your shed? Yeah, it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, like, kind of coiled up as he was shedding, so that's the way it came out. And this one is, like, full. So his tank is pretty simple right now. He has a 20-gallon, the same one from when I got him, and he's getting bigger, so he's going to be upgraded to a 30-gallon soon. Um, we have to find one that has a locking lid because uh, we don't want him to be getting out and eating the rodents. Um, the locking lid has been working great because they're escape artists, and if you don't have a lock on the lid, a locking lid, um, it's possible that he'll get out and eat our rodents. So we definitely have to find one, a 30 on with a locking lid, before we can get that. He's wiggling all over the place. Little worm, spooky noodle. Um, he has an under tank heat mat on the warm side with his little um, hides and um, his like little leaves. And then on the other side, his cool side, he has his water dish to soak in. That also helps um, them shed a little bit easier. You can put some moist towels, sometimes I do, um, inside their hut whenever they're shedding if they don't go in their water bowl. And it helps, um, well, it helps him to have a better full shed. And he ate about two days ago, and you want to wait at least 24 hours before holding them after they eat because they can actually regurgitate their food, and I don't want that to happen. And also, right before they shed, you don't want to hold them. You'll notice that their eyes start to become cloudy and like a bluish color. That means they're getting ready to shed, and you don't want to hold or disturb them because it can be really stressful for them. Oh, look at him. He's squeezing my arm, and it feels like actually really good. <laughs> no. So I do feed him frozen, um, which is already dead, but if he were to eat a live mouse, um, ball pythons are constrictors, so they don't just strike and then eat their food. They um, squeeze it until it stops breathing, and then they eat it. 
He's not squeezing me because he wants to eat me. I'm warm and he likes my body heat, so he wraps around me and it feels really good. I really like snake massages. You should try it. Like when he wraps around my arm, it feels like a blood pressure cuff. Like they can squeeze that tight, but I'm way too big for him to like hurt me in any way. But he just likes to do this. Can you say hi, Elliot? Elliot, can you say hi, bud? Okay, so cute. <laughs> I absolutely love ball pythons. I love all snakes, really, but they're probably my very favorite. I just, like, I love how docile and sweet they are. Like, you can just pick them up and they'll just sit there and, like, climb all over you. Like, wiggle all over you, I guess. Not climb. But they're just fun to relax with. They'll lay on your chest. They'll wrap around you. And they're just, they're really good friends. They're good buddies. They're good spoopy noodles. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. I know I was talking about food and shedding, but you don't want to feed them while they're shedding. You have to wait, like, you can wait till after they're done shedding, and then they'll probably be really hungry after all that work. They'll be ready to eat. Don't feed them during their shedding process or handle them or anything. Just leave them alone for that time. But ball pythons are known to go off speed sometimes. Um, it was actually three or four weeks um, when I first got him before he ever ate anything. So don't be concerned if they go a while without eating. Um, there's a certain amount of time they can go without eating and they won't eat if they just decide they don't they want to go off feed all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, most likely they're just off feed for a while and they will start eating back to normal again. His substrate, I switch off and on between substrates. Sometimes I use the aspen snake bedding and other times I use dirt. Really, you could use either one. It doesn't really matter. You can even use paper towels or newspaper um, as a substrate. It makes things a lot easier for cleaning up. Like, snakes have really messy, stinky poop. And it's a lot easier than having to clean out all the bedding. You can just roll up the paper towel or newspaper and be done. It would be a lot easier, and I know a lot of people use it, and it also works. And I think I said 24. It's actually 48 hours. Um, you should go without handling them after they've eaten. I hope I covered everything for this video. Like I said, it wasn't like how to care for your ball python and like going through like all the care and everything because obviously all animals require a lot of care. Ball pythons are fairly simple, but this is just how I care for mine. You can put in the comments down below if you have a snake and how you care for yours. Um, or if you'd like to have a snake. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if I should do more Scale Saturdays. And I might feature another one of my reptiles in next week's video for a Scale Saturday. Bye, guys. Love you. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And turn on post notifications. And my merch. <laughs>